Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I am a cardiologist in York Hospital and uh, today I wanted to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about and that is the subject of inflammation. So this talk is entitled Understanding Inflammation and inflammation is really um, central to understanding why heart disease develops uh, and in some ways um, once you understand inflammation, you understand you will understand why people develop problems um, and how you can go about minimizing your chance of developing heart problems. Okay, so the um, the first thing to say is that every action has a reaction when it comes to the body. Okay, if you do something to the body, then the body will react. And there are a variety of different ways to do things to the body. So, for example, I want to show you two uh, little um, things. I have in my hand a knife and I have in my hand a toothbrush, right? Okay. So a lot of people will think, oh, the knife is more dangerous than the toothbrush. Because if I, for example, um, uh, Cut my cut my skin with the knife, then I am uh, causing an acute injury to my skin, and my body will react to that injury. And what will happen is my I will start bleeding. My after I start bleeding, a clot will form, and then um, my skin will be red and hot for a few days. And as long as I leave it alone, it will settle, and I'll be left with a tiny small scar, which after a few weeks or months will not even be visible. Um, now, so most people will think, oh, this knife is more dangerous than the toothbrush. Now, the toothbrush actually, um, so what I've just explained to you with the knife is what is called acute inflammation, okay? Acute inflammation means you have a big insult, uh, you have a reaction from the body, the body reacts with um, getting red and hot, and then uh, um, it bleeds and a scar forms and then the inflammation settles down. Now, think of, I want to explain to you what chronic inflammation is, okay? Chronic inflammation is me taking my hand, for example, let me just show you this. Um, ooh, here you go. And if I take this toothbrush and I run it over my hand like this, all right, and I keep running it, and I keep running it, and I keep running it, I keep running it, I keep running it, I keep running it, and then after a little while, what will happen is, my skin will start going red, all right? It'll go red and it'll look a little bit hot. It won't be as painful as me cutting myself with a knife, but it'll still be a little bit red and a little bit angry. Now imagine if I do that all the time, I keep doing that, I keep doing that, I keep doing that. If I keep doing that, after a while, it, what will happen is my skin will start permanently getting affected. It'll become, um, it'll change texture, it will become more fragile, it will be more uh, discolored, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll start looking more ulcerated, the skin will start thickening over it, and actually, it, from time to time, it will start bleeding, you know? So after a little while, after months of me just rubbing this toothbrush against my skin, um, eventually you will find that it'll get itchy, it will um, bleed whenever it wants to, even a little insult to this, Bleed. That is what chronic inflammation is, okay? Chronic inflammation is continuous inflammation, which may not be hideously um, um, painful or uh, dramatic in the first instance, but it is just going on and it is slowly and slowly, slowly causing these horrible changes to happen and making this area very vulnerable. And this is what happens uh, with our heart arteries when we have when we are putting things inside our body uh, which the body is not used to the body reacts okay if we put our body through things it shouldn't do have to do if we put our body through excessive stress then the body reacts um, and that reaction is the inflammation and that reaction is usually measured by sort of things like 
cortisol and adrenaline and inflammatory markers and interleukins and things like things called tumor necrosis factor alpha but basically the body reacts all right and the body is trying to react because um in the hope that um the inflammation you know it it inflame in the hope that the insult will go away and everything will start healing but actually if the inflammation doesn't go away the body continues reacting and all these chemicals that the body is producing in response can in the long run start harming the body and uh, this is what happens when we say eat bad things this is what happens when we smoke for example uh, we're putting chemicals in the body reacts but if you keep doing it you get this chronic inflammatory reaction and this happens in our blood vessels okay it happens in other tissues as well but it happens in our blood vessels and what then happens is we start developing hardening of our arteries because of this continuous inflammation that goes on and because uh, you develop this hardening of the arteries the arteries are never the same okay and because they become hardened they become rougher cholesterol bits of cholesterol come and join in on them and slowly and gradually the heart artery gets uh, starts getting narrower this is what coronary disease is this is what atherosclerosis is this is what everyone worries about because once your heart arteries once your arteries start getting diseased you will never go back to the way they were you have done permanent damage to those right now a lot of the people a lot of management a lot of treatment is aimed at preventing the heart arteries from getting very narrow and because um once the heart arteries get narrower and narrower and narrower they will stop blood from getting through to where the blood is needed okay and eventually in the most severe form if they close up they would cause a heart attack but before they close up they will get so narrow that they would actually stop blood from getting through when the demand is raised so when the heart is beating faster the blood can't get through and therefore a lot of these people who have this will say i'm i was fine six months ago now i walk um uh, 500 yards i get this chest discomfort i get breathless i have to stop and as i stop the discomfort goes away so basically what's happened is as they're walking their heart rate goes up the heart wants more blood but the blood can't get through quick enough through the narrowing and because of that the person develops symptoms of chest discomfort and therefore stops and then the blood can get through because the heart is not beating so fast so it doesn't require as much and because the blood can then get through the discomfort goes away but there is more than this okay so that is what happens if you keep getting the hardening of the arteries but remember what can also happen because these arteries are now more fragile like the skin which has been continuously excoriated by the toothbrush it can bleed and you know a slight insult slight slight um, um extra excoriation on top of what has already happened can cause it to bleed and that's what happens sometimes in people so they have this disease they have this fragile um, area in their heart arteries and then they go through another level of inflammation something else causes more inflammation maybe they go under extreme stress or maybe they develop an infection or maybe something else happens some kind of event happens and then what happens is that the area which is excoriated starts bleeding and when it bleeds then uh, a clot has to form to stop the bleeding and when the clot forms that clot although it's designed to uh, stop the bleeding where this excoriated area is it actually uh, inadvertently blocks off the whole blood vessel and therefore blood stops going through and you have a heart attack and that is without warning the heart attack just happens out of the blue there's been no preceding symptoms of discomfort of the chest after walking or anything patient as well suddenly has a heart attack and often such patients can drop down dead as well um, so why am i telling you this i'm telling you this because one of the most important things we can do for ourselves is reduce the inflammation that goes on in our bodies okay because we know that certain things cause inflammation so if we avoid doing those certain things then we will reduce the inflammation so what are those things that cause inflammation number one by far and away more important than everything else is bad food supermarket food 
food that's got preservatives, food that's got additives, food that's had pesticides sprayed over it, food with excessive amounts of sugar, you know, processing. Um, this is by far the worst thing we can do. But we do it. We do it happily because to, when we go to the supermarket, we don't see this. We see this. We think this is harmless. It's not. This is, this is worse than this in the chronic state. And therefore, I think that um, this is by far the biggest problem that we face. And this is why we see so much heart disease. It is nutrition. And the nutrition that we are exposed to these days is um, fed to us by greedy people who are not interested in our health. They are not interested in whether we live or die. They are interested in making a quick buck. Uh, and therefore, it is very, very important for ourselves to try and reclaim our health back to try and avoid processed food, to try and avoid all this kind of rubbish that goes on in supermarkets and try and see if you can get access to local, locally grown food, food that has been grown by someone you know or someone you can trust rather than some obscure person, uh, you know, who you don't know and who doesn't know you, uh, which is what most supermarket food is. Number two, smoking. Smoking also causes a huge level of inflammation in the body, you know, and that is why they say that sometimes it's not just about how cumulative amount of smoking, that is of course important, but even one cigarette if you're unlucky enough, could cause that little bit of bleeding. And if that bleeding happens, then the clot happens and the clot happens, that's when you have a heart attack out of the blue. And that is why it's so important that when, you sm when you're smoking, to stop smoking completely, not to cut down, to stop smoking completely, because every cigarette has that potential of causing a heart attack. Number three, um, Sleep, you know, people don't sleep enough. It is incredibly important to sleep. Sleep is a natural anti-inflammatory and it reduces the amount of inflammation. It allows things to heal, all right? Remember cortisol, adrenaline, these are all things that propagate this. If you sleep, everything comes down. It gives your blood vessels a chance to heal. Um, what else? Uh, exercise, exercise is really important. Um, the more exercise, the more sort of, you know, moderate exercise you get, the better. I'm not talking about very uh, severe, unaccustomed exercise. I'm not talking about running ultra marathons, but I do think it is very important to get some degree of cardiovascular exercise uh, every day, all right? Um, even if that would be, you know, just jogging on the treadmill for 30 minutes, great stuff, hugely anti-inflammatory, hugely beneficial. Um, Stress, stress is hugely inflammatory. You know, everyone is stressed. We're bombarded by the media. We're bombarded by everyone. We're bombarded by the politicians and we're put under so much stress and stress is hugely inflammatory. And that will undoubtedly cause this kind of inflammation within the body. Um, uh, similarly, negative emotions like anger. Anger is hugely inflammatory. Um, anxiety is hugely inflammatory. Depression is hugely inflammatory. If you, if you have other conditions like diabetes, people who have chronic conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, you know, inflammatory bowel disease. Um, I think even things like reflux are very inflammatory. And so gastroesophageal reflux. So it's really important to try and suppress your inflammation levels. To date, we are not at that stage where we can predict who's going to have a heart attack and who isn't. Despite all the technology we, we have, people still have heart attacks out of the blue. Um, and our, um, our technology is not sophisticated enough to um, tell us who is going to have a heart attack and who isn't. Uh, and I suspect that the answer lies in something called the inflammatory index or the inflammatory load now, this is not something that is done routinely, but I think that at some point, someone is going to develop a way of measuring how inflamed you are. And I suspect that we probably cross a threshold of how inflamed we are. And once we cross that threshold, that's when things start going wrong with our bodies. And therefore, I think that a lot of, if we um, modify our lives according to how inflamed we are and try and take holidays and cut out our workloads and cut down on our stress levels as for our inflammatory levels, then, um, then there is going to be a substantial decrease 
in sudden heart attacks, there's going to be a decrease in the development of a heart disease. Now, you've heard this here first. No one has done this so far, and I suspect that someone will 50 years from now. I may not be around by then, but uh, if you are, please tell them you heard this first here. All right. So um, I may be wrong, of course, but uh, this is what I think. So I, I just wanted to point out inflammation to you. And Undoubtedly, we know that 80% of Western diseases are now due to lifestyle, all right? It is not something that is inherent in us, but something we are doing to our body. It's also worth remembering that a ton of people come to me with heart disease now, and I say, well, you know, I look and I find that they've been smoking, although they, they were smokers, and they turn around and say, well, yeah, I know I've got heart disease, I used to smoke, but in those days, no one told us that smoking was harmful. So we used to just smoke. That's true. No one is telling us that supermarket food is bad for us. No one is telling us that all this stress is bad for us. Uh, no one is telling us that all this sugar that is put in the food these days when we buy it is bad for us. But I wouldn't be surprised if 30, 40 years down the line, we have heart disease and we turn around and tell their doctors then that, oh, well, you know, that's what it was, you know, that, no one told us this, everyone did it, and so we did it, and here we are um, uh, reaping the consequences of those mistakes, um, which are not really your mistakes, this is really driven by uh, greedy people who run the food industry, uh, the tobacco industry, and the media who are very responsible for the amount of stress that we're under. So um, I hope this was useful. Um, uh, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist. I have a website, yourcardiology.co.uk. Um, I have a Facebook page. And um, I have a long-suffering secretary, Jeanette. Um, so if you ever want to get in touch with me, please feel free to uh, get in touch with me via Jeanette or my website, and I'd be delighted to talk to you. I, um, uh, if you found this useful, then please do consider sharing it uh, because it means a lot to me to know that my message is getting across um, uh, in a world where, uh, you know, uh, what is fed to us by the media and, um, and um, uh, about health is not really about health, it's more about disease. And I'm really uh, passionate about driving this message of, Let's be healthy. Let's reclaim our health. Let's try and stop a disease from happening rather than worrying about getting sorted once we've developed a disease. Because often by that time, you can never go back. Once you've got this inflammation in your skin and you've done 10 years of damage to it, it will never be the same again. Uh, so um, thank you so much for listening. If you like this, please share the video and uh, give me a call. You know, send me a message. All the best. Take care. Bye. Oh, by the way, it's a really important day for a member of the York Cardiology family. So, Arman, happy birthday. All right, bye.